Hi, my name is Lulu. I'm a compulsive overeater. And today uh, we got some uh, a question. Somebody wanted to, uh, somebody inquired about relapse. Uh, relapse in general and then relapse also specifically about somebody that's working the steps and relapses. Um, it's really, it, it's really heartbreaking to see somebody work so hard um, that I've worked with many people that have um, taken their step one, step two, we take this beautiful step three together, they start writing, they're in the middle of the writing, they've been writing for weeks, and they eat. And uh, it's like, they wanna just like, so bad, they wanna pretend it never happened. They don't wanna say it because they know it means maybe the crumbling of all their hopes and visions that they had for themselves, because that's exactly what it is. I mean, it's a relapse. When you break your absence, I, I don't know many people, I don't know anybody really, that breaks their abstinence and then just gets abstinent again the next day, and then they have another 10 years of abstinence. I mean, it's just, it's just I've, I've never seen it, because it's usually, um, the be it's just the beginning of something. It's a beginning. It's never usually a binge. The break is usually never a binge. It's usually just a bite of something uh, or extra abstinent food. But like that's where it starts with the food. But whatever it it, it started probably several weeks ago in in the mind. So. Um, I came to program when I was in my 40s, 20, 20 years ago, my early 40s, and I was in program and I was abstinent for three years, back to back, every single day for three years, lost tons of weight, um, but I wasn't doing the program. I wasn't doing the program, and, and if anybody ever told me, oh, it's just a matter of time for you, um, no, I thought I had it. I, 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 I've got this. I'm doing this program uh, the way I want to do it minus the things that offend me. Um, and I remember, you know, and my sponsor was my God because I didn't have a God. I didn't want a God. So my sponsor was like my God as far as this program went because she was the one that I was accountable to. She was just like my Jenny Craig, you know? And I was accountable to her. Um, she expected my calls and, and every day I called her, I wanted to be abstinent when I talked to her and I didn't want to get fat again. So th this was my MO. It had nothing to do with how can I be of service to other people? None of that stuff. So um, one day she called me after we had been working together for a couple of years and she called me and she said, I can't be a sponsor anymore. And I was like, why? And she said, I ate. I ate. I was like, you did? And of course, all I'm thinking about, all I'm thinking about is like, well, what am I going to do now? I, I didn't think like for a second, like, oh my goodness, like this poor woman, she's been here for so long and she just broke her abs and are you going to be okay? What are you doing? No, it was all about like, you know, what am I going to do now? Because I didn't have this, um, this feeling of, joy and happiness and wanting to be helpful. I didn't get the promises of the program because I wasn't working the program. And um, so that was my first experience with an, a relapse affecting me. And that was my sponsor eating. And I always tell my sponsees, I tell them like, for now, I am like the, your extension cord to God. You need a God that's so big that's going to, uh, it's just, it never runs out. It's never going to disappoint. It's never going to eat and disappear. It's, 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 the, it's, a, it's a steady. And I said, for now, I am the extension cord between you and God. But my job is to put your hand into the hand of God because I can't be your God. I could eat tomorrow. And when I say that, I really mean it because it happened to me. It's like every day that I eat, that I don't eat, is a good day for me. 
it's a good day for all the people I work with. It's in, in program. It's a good day for all the people in my life. <laughs> it's just a good day all around for everybody. It's like the, the most spiritual thing I do every day. It's the way I measure my food. It, it put, keeps me in a, um, in a state of um, peace with the food. And I can be of better service to God and those people about me. But after I did, I think I got another sponsor, but I was absent for three years. And um, I decided one day that I didn't think a glass of wine would hurt me all that bad. And it was kind of like one of those suddenly the thought crossed my mind scenarios. And um, so I had the glass of wine and I just knew this is all, I just wanted a glass of wine with this new friend. And, and, um, and you know, this is what happens. Like, in a relapse, you it, it you either go face first in the food, so you get out of the box, and you're um, and you and you're, you're like you're back to every takeout joint and every Seven Eleven and everything, and you can't you get the car filled with wrappers. You're all back right there again. Most of the time, it's it's sneaky, because I I I remember I got the illusion that I really had control because I didn't have the appetizer with the wine. I just had the wine. See how good I am? You know, and so, but what happens is that when the next week comes and it's just like, oh, I was very successful with the glass of wine. I bet you I could try the glass of wine and the app. Let's try that. Try that. That was great. I didn't go home and binge. So it just, it sneaks up on you. And you know, whether it happens that day, next week, next month, Six months from now, if you're an addict, the one that I studied about in the doctor's opinion, then you're going to be back face first in the piles of food. Um, it's just, uh, it's just sometimes it's suddenly and sometimes it's slow. And, um, but it just grabs your thoughts. And of course, I stopped going to program. And then, so then, you know, what, you know, then, then it was interesting because I didn't consider myself an alcoholic at the time at all. Um, I mean, I drank a lot, but I didn't consider myself an alcoholic. And it's really interesting that at 55 years old, so now, you know, I did it like another decade and a half of pain and um, came back and it was the alcohol that kind of brought me in. And then, and then I put the food down too. But as far as the steps go, so if I'm on step one with somebody, uh, I believe that, you know, you, you have to put the fire out before you do the renovations, you know? So we're going to renovate our whole lives and our whole mindset and our whole relationship with food. It's like a renovation. Got to put the fire out. So the fire is the, is the eating. So um, I've heard it debated before, like, well, you know, if I have the spiritual awakening, then, then I won't want to eat. So it seems like I should do the steps first and then wait for this miracle to happen to me. And I've heard that before. Um, I, I don't know that anybody would have the clarity and the attention span because food takes up way, way too much space in the head, way too much space in the head to ever be a student of this disease. You just, cause you're in steps one and two, you're a student. These are the steps that you're learning. Steps one and two, you learn. Steps three through nine, you take. Steps 10, 11, 12, you live. And you're just not going to learn. So um, I've had people that have relapsed. Um, before they start writing. Um, I spend so much time on step one with sponsees, like so much time. Like when we're going to sit down and actually take step one, which is, um, uh, I forget what page it's on, but it's like, you know, um, can I fully concede to my innermost self that I am um, a food addict? Um, the delusion that I might be able to eat like other people one day needs to be smashed. That's like smashed. Like if you take a vase and you smash it, like you're not gluing it back together. It's just not just a crack. It's a smash. And um, so I know like, you know, when I get to two and three with somebody and if they've eaten, 
I'm just like, I don't know what we missed. What did you miss? I mean, I can't, I have nothing else to tell you about step one. We spent weeks talking about step one. You know, if you look in, um, I jotted these, these step one of the first 164 pages of the big book, step one is 34% of the text. Steps two through 11 are 25% of the text. And step 12 is 41% of the text. So steps one and 12 are the, really the foundation of this program and it's what most of the text is about. So 34% of the book we're studying weeks, 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 listening to podcasts and going over everything, sharing our own stories. And then when they take it, so now how do you like go back to that and say like, what did, what did, like, what didn't you understand? Like, <laughs> if you fully conceded, like what, like what happened and what can I do for you going forward? I can really never find it. Um, whatever was going on at that time that they took that bite, um, it's like maybe like giving me a call first would have been a really good idea, you know, but you didn't want to be talked out of it. And the reason I know this is because I lived it. Okay, so I know, I know how we think. <laughs> I know how we think. And um, so, um, you know, I, I, if we haven't started writing yet, I may, I may um, give them another opportunity, but it's, it's uh, uh, my, my record is that it's never successful. It's just kind of like when you've studied step one and two and three and you're marinating yourself in that and then you still eat, it's like you, maybe you're just not ready, you know? So I just believe it's either not your time or I am not the, the messenger for this, uh, for you. I'm not, you know, God's not speaking to you through me, but there's a lot of people that God speaks to through me. Um, but you might need to hear it from someone else. And I just, I, and you know, I don't think like, what did I do wrong? I mean, I can't get anybody, I don't take any credit for anybody that has a wonderful recovery that's been under my wing at all. It's not, it's not, it's not my work, it's their work. And I also don't um, blame myself for anybody that eats like, what did I do wrong? What did I do, what did I do? There's nothing, you know, there's nothing that I, I do wrong. Um, because I didn't write the book, you know, it's not like I'm going to try to find the mistake in my book. It's not my book, you know, and I follow the book. Uh, and um, so I just find that like, it's practically impossible to, it's not impossible to start over, but with me and my, this is just a personal choice for me. And it would be how I would advise any of my sponsees that are sponsoring. Um, I would just say like, you know, really the question is, is like, what do you want, what do you want for me? Like, what do I have for you that I are, I already, I already told you everything I know about step one. I can't, whatever I say again, it's just going to be everything I already said. So like, I don't know what to say, you know? Um, it's just that not everybody is ready. You know, not everybody is truly, truly, deeply ready for that level of surrender, especially into step three. And, um, and, um, you know, it's a shame, but I can't, you know, we can't save the world. I can't save, every, I can't help every addict. I only can help an addict that wants to help themselves, you know, and, um, but relapse is, it's, it makes me really sad because I, I know it's never worth it. I know that that bite it's like like how important was that bite like you picked up a piece of food and then you put it in your mouth and then you chew 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 and then you swallow and like really was that like the big event of the day like was that a wonderful moment it's just like just you know to get through the step work and have this life that you wouldn't even find any true enjoyment out of that you know it's not like true happiness um but you need to be in a in a in a certain receiving space and um uh that's why i like people to have at least like a week or a week or two of abstinence under their belt before we start studying um because if you can go the two weeks you're, you're kind of showing that you kind of mean business 
and that maybe you know then always at meetings you see them always at meetings and you just feel like you know they're they're gonna they're gonna get it um Shalise, do you have anything you'd like to add to this yeah actually um before we started the meeting and, and you kind of covered this already i think it's probably pretty clear but i just wanted to just ask the question just to to make it super duper clear what's the difference between a slip and a relapse. So if you would address that, and then I have a few thoughts as well. Okay, well, it's my opinion that if somebody says I broke my abstinence, then that means they ate something that's not on their food plan, whether it's more abstinent food, or it's different food that's not on your food plan, or whether it's a binge, it doesn't matter if it's one bite or a handful of grapes. Like I had an I had an apple and I shouldn't have had an apple. Um, uh, that's a break in abstinence. And uh, anything else that you call it that doesn't sound as painful as that is just another word for the same thing. I mean, who wants to admit like that they've failed? Like it's like a failure. So if you call it a slip, it just feels like, oops. No, it's not an oops. It's not an oops. It's a break, and um, um, and the only way to really get well in this program is to see that for what it really truly is. It's not a slip. It's a break. That's my opinion. And if you need to call it a slip, so that you don't feel so bad, um, there's just some resistance, you know. And it's it's hard because it's a t it's a really tough addiction. It's, it's really tough. It's really tough. What do you get to say about that, Shalise? What are your thoughts? Yeah, it is a, it is a tough one. And I was just thinking about, um, and, I, and maybe you can help me find exactly where it is in more about alcoholism. But it talks about, let us, let us examine the thinking that precedes the, the first drink. Or, um, so, um, and I can't, I can't find it exactly. I'm looking through it. But really a relapse starts like Lulu said way before the first bite it, it starts in your head it starts in your mind um and for for a, a, a relapse to happen it's very subtle thinking you know our minds are very very tricky and from from though I I have not experienced re relapse personally but I know that I have uh, you know, that, that I am not immune to relapse. I am an addict and I, I the, all I got is today and that, that I'm choosing to be abstinent today. And I, and I hope to, <laughs> that I will not relapse, but I know, um, from experience, uh, on the, on the sponsorship side, um, what I've seen in my experience with sponsoring people, and it's been, you know, in various stages of, you know, either before fourth step or during fourth step, during fifth step. Um, but a lot of times it happens later on in, you know, fifth step um, or it has with, with people that I have sponsored. And it started with subtle things like not weighing their food. And it was, um, you know, and, and it doesn't come out till after the relapse is, is you know, it's like, oh, I didn't, tell you I, I really need to tell you that I a couple months ago I did this or that and then oh and then last week I did this and and it was it, it's also you know a lot of times it'll start with not weighing their food um and so it uh it 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 it, it can start in subtle ways and so it's a it's a it's a tricky it's a tricky thing, but the, the, the book, like I say, it's very, very detailed as to how to manage, um, and, and really avoid the, the, the relapse, um, with working the steps. And that's, it's, it's, it's just an interesting thing. It's an interesting thing. Any thoughts as far as the thinking that proceeds? Um, relapse, Lulu. Oh, you're muted. 
Yeah. Um, you know, it never, it never appears to be something that's, you know, really kind of thought out. It's just, it's a buildup of emotions. It's a buildup of emotions and not to trust like that until you learn what to do with those emotions as you go through the step work, how you, you have like a new set of skills to get through life's situations. Um, you have to just, you know, I, I tell sponsees like, you know how like you're, we've all, we're all great dieters, like we've all been very successful on diets. Um, well, this, this, do that now. Just stay on your diet for right now until it doesn't feel like a diet. So just don't cheat on your diet. I mean, it's not what we do once we're in recovery, but um, I know you can muster that up because I know you've done it probably 50 times in your life like me, <laughs> you know? And uh, so anyway, that's about I, all I have on relapse. I just hope, I hope and pray that people, if you've got a day of abstinence, go for day two. If you got two, go for day three. If it feels good today, do it again tomorrow. If it worked today, do it again tomorrow. And then just the days just seem to pile up. It's like, uh, just life is just so much brighter when I just stay absent. Just yeah. Yeah, and I, I think um, it, it feels like, you know, at the beginning, I remember just thinking that, I couldn't even make it through day one and it, it gets easier. It does as, as you get the, as you get the relief that comes from working the steps. And I love what Harlan says about um, that, that God, which is where the, the, the steps lead us to the God uh, gives us the same, same effect that the food does, but without the devastating side effects. And so that's, that's what I'm going for. So 